You're still live on Joy News today. Now, WaterAid Ghana with funding from Hong Kong Shanghai Banking Corporation for the past two years has been supporting some communities in the Upper West region. The projects are in the area of improving healthcare, water, sanitation, and hygiene. Joy News' Upper West Regional Correspondent who visited some of the projects in the Wa Municipality reports that the construction of those projects have improved significantly in service delivery and other positive changes um, in the lives of the people. Water Aid Ghana's Country Program Strategy 2016-2021 in light of the Sustainable Development Goals, SDGs, and Water Aid's global strategy for everyone, everywhere, to have access to water, sanitation, and hygiene wash by 2030. Over the years, Water Aid Ghana has provided services to over 2 million people in some of the poorest communities in the country. Chere, located in the one municipality of the Upper West region, is one of 25 communities benefiting from projects from Water Aid Ghana with funding from Hong Kong Shanghai Banking Corporation, HSBC. Inside the Chere Health Center are mechanized borehole powered by solar, an incinerator, and a toilet constructed for use by nurses and their clients. One municipal health promotion officer, Abdullahi Kulio, threw more light on the projects. So now, Water is very, very important, and Water Aid have realized this, and they came to our aid to build a very giant water facility with a big poly tank as a reservoir, and then a solar system that is pumping the water automatically. So before now, we used to have challenges at some of our health facilities. Now Water Aid have intervened in this direction, not only the water, they organized series of trainings on wash IPC, that's wash fit and wash IPC for our staff on how to use these facilities, how to take care of clients, and then how to take care of their own selves when it comes to what? Wash activities. So Water Aid has intervened, organized series of trainings for our staff, and then those that are delivering services at the community level, and then they followed up by what? Building these facilities for us to make the package complete. Before the construction of the solar mechanized borehole, nurses at the Chair Health Center used to compete with the town folks for water. A situation which midwife Sarah Chirua said made them to lose most of their productive times looking for water. At first, we used to go out to fetch water. We waste much time there. There's a borehole down there. We used to go there to fetch the water. You go and be in a kiwa for a longer time before you get even one bucket of water to come and bath and come to work. At first, we used to go to work late. Our woman would come and deliver. How to wash the instrument, it was a problem. How to allow them to bath at the facility, it was a, it was a problem. However, there's a wind of change. But thanks to uh, our water aid, now we have water everywhere, 24 hours. We get water to do whatever we want to do, including even our, uh, our cortices. We have water running 24 hours. So for now, we don't have problem on our water system. We have water, in, we have water everywhere, hand washing and everything. Is going on successfully. Make no mistake, this is not a crematorium, but rather an incinerator. It's one of the facilities put up by Water Aid at the Cherry Health Center to aid in the burning of solid waste. One municipal environmental health officer, Mona Baba Paul, elaborate on how helpful the incinerator has been for them. And if you look at it, this is the hatch, uh, this is the main door. You open here and then you drop whatever material you want to burn into this particular chamber. It is a bar incinerator. There's, it is created with iron rods, bar. The material is dropped here, and then you burn. And when you are burning, you now close it and burn. We have a, a chimney on top where the, this is run, the smoke would gush out. After incinerating, then the, what is it? The, the clinker or the ash that is left over 
now comes drops under this vault. We have a hatch door here where later we collect these things and then we safely bury them into a dispose them. In most of the facilities we have what is it? Some pits that are created for some of these things. And because the, the quantity is just limited, what we sometimes have is the inside these ashes we have the droplets of the needles and strangers that are not being able to bend all. So you now collect all and you safely manage dispose them. So this hatch door is always closed. Say that nothing goes inside. It's after you bend, then you now safely remove the ash there and then you now dispose of them. One thing unique about projects initiated by Water Aid Ghana is that they are climate change friendly. When you look at the power supply or the source of the power that is pumping the water into the reservoir, I think that they have been talking, we have been talking about going green and solar energy is one of the recommended energy sources. So I think that Water Aid is one NGO that has climate change in mind when they are undertaking their projects. So that is how come that they are not talking of national grid, but they have brought the power source that is environmental friendly, which is the solar source of power. Some 15 kilometers away from Chere lies these two communities, Grumun and Nyolo. In the past, the only option for them to attend nature's call was the free range. And as a result, the communities were inundated with feces. Did pre trigger where we met most of the the elder, the community elders, did triggering with the the community members, and then we kick started the project where community members realizing that they were eating their own shit, which was disgusting, and had to take an, an initiative of owning a household latrine. So they all did. We didn't prescribe any kind of latrine. They themselves decided that they would have to dig their own latrines with the locally made materials that they available materials that they have. So, so if you even see those that probably collapse, the people have done what they've done, made efforts to put up new structure, uh, very resilient structures. We've trained some lateral artisans in the community. In most of the communities that we are working, Water Aid assisted us, and we've trained at least two persons from each of the communities who are helping us to actually construct very good latrines at least that would stay the test of time more worrying is the number of diseases they battled as a result of bites from dangerous animals like snakes and pythons 25 year old father of two jacob menenya recalled how one pregnant woman lost her life as a result of snake bite one of our pregnant women went to cut fire wood and then decided to free herself. She got bitten by a snake and she died as a result. However, with the construction of these toilets, our women and our children are now free from snakes. Middle aged Ibono Banye live in this house with his two wives and six children. He told me how the idea of having a toilet and a tippy tap was conceived. We went around and informed all the people in the community about the need to have toilets in their homes. Our people mobilized and quickly went into action, and each household constructed their toilet. So here at Gurumuni and Nyolo, there is no single house here without their own toilet. None of us defecate in the open and we are proud about it.